Hi Virgo, welcome to your weekly check-in for the 19th to the 25th of November. These messages are for Virgo sun, moon or rising. So if you need any more information about that, if you're unfamiliar with the terms or you just want to look at your birth chart in general, there's a link to a website in the description box that can help you out with that. Thank you to everyone who watches the videos, likes, shares, comments and subscribes to the channel as well. It's all very much appreciated. If you'd like to book a personal reading, please see the info in the description box for how to do that as well. So these are the oracle decks I'm going to be using for today's reading. We're going to start off with a goddesses, gods and guardians oracle card, first of all, and that's going to be your main theme for the checking. So what does Virgo sun, moon or rising need to know for the 19th to the 25th of November, please? What's your main theme here for this weekly check-in? I'll have a look at it, but I'm not going to take it because that sort of just fell out of the deck. It says Hecate or Hecate, depending on how you want to pronounce it, past life healing. So let's try that again. It literally just fell out of the deck. Didn't flip or anything. So Virgo sun, moon or rising 19th to the 25th of November, please. What's the main theme? What's the main theme here for Virgo sun, moon or rising? It's like the cards don't want to tell us. <laughs> we go we have carne life force energy so i'm going to get the rest of your cards out and then i'll have a look at the message in the book for that so with the tarot now what is your main theme from the tarot so again virgo sun moon or rising what's your main theme from the tarot this is the everyday witch tarot You have the Five of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups. And notice the water with the, you've got the Queen of Cups and with this God, I'm assuming here, um, he's by waterfall, isn't he, as well? So there's a lot of water going on. What's your energy specifically? How are you, how are you dealing with things? Right, we've got the Emperor. Any external or surrounding energies for you? Do I want to take, I am going to take all of them. That is a lot, but I feel like it, um, yeah, feels necessary. So we have the Eight of Pentacles, Justice and the Tower. Right, okay. Let's look at any guidance for you as well. You've got the Two of Pentacles there, okay. You've got a lot going on by the looks of it. So let's look at that carne message and see what that says. And I will read this message from the book for you. So it says, hydrate and nourish your body. Good health is returning. So I don't know if anybody's had any, any health related issues. Carne is a major Hawaiian god of fresh water or why? And I, I may have butchered that word. So forgive me if I have. The creative energy source of all life. A revered ancestor who once walked the terrain of Hawaii. Kane cracked open the rocks to bring forth pure water springs from deep inside the land. Hawaiians hold great respect for this god who provides the physical and spiritual life force energy to sustain them. It's believed that gods or akua take many forms such as plants, animals or natural symbols. These various bodies are called kine, kinolau, sorry if I've butchered that too, and give people food, raw materials, medicines and ceremonial objects. Kane has numerous kinalau, including plants, Hawaiian owls and coral, but his most important forms are fresh water and sunlight. Rainbows are his sacred sign. Right, bursting with vitality, Kane comes with a simple message. Your body would benefit from drinking more fresh water and eating nutrient-rich foods. Kane doesn't come here to judge or lecture you about your dietary choices. He invites you to stand beneath his waterfall, soak up his rainbow colours and tune into your body's real needs. Your spirit needed a reminder about cultivating true health and life force energy. 
Kane says, smiling wi widely. Every drop of water or morsel of food contains a living consciousness and vibrational power. Is the way you eat and drink supporting your highest purpose? If your physical or creative energy needs boosting, consider your dietary habits. The way to optimum health now is to open your heart, feed your body with loving awareness rather than criticism or self-loathing. Celebrate your food, savour the colours, tastes and textures, textures. Give thanks to the creative source of the universe for sustaining you. Life is a joy when you see the sacred energy within everything. Additional me meanings, your purpose is connected to food and nutrition. Grow your own produce, limit your consumption of junk food. This is a positive message about healing from an eating disorder and give to clean water and or food charities. The invocation says, I'm in tune with my body's needs. I'm full of energy. So I, when I was reading that, I just kept looking at this eight of pentacles and I, I just got this thing about a pharmacy in my mind. Um, yeah, there could be something here. I mean, is it mentions health. So I don't know, I'm getting pharmacy or it could be like a herbal practitioner or a natural practitioner. So if you have any health issues, um, this is an external energy here. So this might relate to something that can help you, whether it is formal medical intervention or a more natural route. Um, but we'll have a look at that after. So... As I said, you've got a lot of water energy here, which, I mean, water is associated with healing, isn't it? Five of Pentacles. This is your main theme here as well. The Five of Pentacles, it can be, I believe, connected to um, to health issues. Um, and I, I mean, I think most readers try not to get, not to sort of get into health related stuff. There are certain things that we try that a lot of readers um, will not, you know, things we won't touch, like... I'm one of those readers that I don't want to predict death. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, there, there are other readers like that as well. And a lot of readers are like, oh, we won't touch health issues. We won't touch pregnancy. You know what I mean? In readings, we don't look into that stuff because it's just, yeah, there's, it's like unwritten, an unwritten law of some kind that you don't, you don't go into that kind of stuff. I mean, you'll see in my description box, there's like a disclaimer that I won't, I won't um, address legal issues. And you know what I mean? Like, obviously, if you see that somebody's got a court case going on, You'll talk about that. But if someone came to you for a personal reading, you'd there are certain things that you just won't interfere with. But yeah, Five of Pentacles, I, I do believe it can be associated with health issues. So it could be, I mean, you've got that here in the um, in this card here, the uh, Oracle card. So it could be relevant here. But let's get the clarifiers out and see um, what comes up. I mean, this is the this is the a card of balance, isn't it? But it's like juggling. Um, it's juggling, it's pentacles. I mean, this could be talking about getting yourself back into health, but I suppose the key here within a reading is what's, um, what is part of the problem would be the main thing. I mean, you've got the emperor's your energy. This is someone who has a lot of responsibility. So is there something here potentially where, you know, when the body's under stress, where you take on a lot and then the body is under stress and then that affects your health, that, that could be something here that's relevant to someone. But let's let's get the clarifiers out, and look, clarifiers out and look at the Five of Pentacles and Queen of Cups first of all. And it's it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have to be physical health. It can be mental health or emotional health as well. But then those things manifest in the body, don't they? Like stress can manifest in the body through aches, pains, stomach issues, I mean, I can speak for myself personally with, with relating to um, digestive issues from stress that I didn't even realise it was caused by stress. I just thought there was something else going on physically. Headaches, those kinds of things. I mean, always seek um, your doctor's advice first with stuff like that. And then obviously, depending on what they say, take it from there. If there are natural things that will help and, you know, it's in, it's supported I would say supported by your doctor, but some doctors don't support that stuff, do they? So you know best, but, you know, get professional advice first, um, first and foremost. So five of pentacles, queen of cups. Why is that there as the main theme for Virgo? The first card we have is the six of pentacles. So I did say you might have taken on a lot of responsibility. Um, you might have taken on too much responsibility potentially with the emperor and the six of pentacles it's a card of generosity it's a card of giving i mean it can be about give and take but it's the first thing that comes to mind is generosity with it isn't it so could you be or have been giving too much um of your time and energy and kind of depleted yourself a bit anything else yeah 
So we've got the Page of Cups, we've got the Two of Cups. Anything else? We've got the Fool here, and we'll get one more for that. So you've got the Queen of Cups again, okay. And strangely, I was looking at the right at the Queen of Cups, focused on her when that came out. So, yeah, see, look at the opposite ends um, of everything. You've got two people who are taking on responsibility, haven't you? The Queen of Cups, she's very nurturing. She's very caring. She's very giving. Six of Pentacles, it's a card of generosity. In between, what have you got? You have. So you've got the Page of Cups, which is a child. Um... And I think one of the big things with the, the Page of Cups is that, I mean, all kids need emotional nurturing, but obviously with the Page of Cups, because it's cups, um, they may, I, would I say they need that more than others? I don't know the best way to put it, but that's that's the only thing I can think of, um, that the focus with the Page of Cups would be emotional nurturing for a child or someone with childlike behaviour. Um, so someone who's a dependent, basically. Then you've got the Two of Cups. So that is, um, it's connections, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't, it, it's not always about a person, but it probably is here. It's it's your connections with other people. You've got the Fool here. I'm going to clarify, I think I'm going to clarify the Two of Cups and the Fool to see how they fit in exactly. Um, I mean, it might be telling you that you need a little bit more freedom. If you've taken on too much responsibility, that might be something that comes up here and that could be why the fool is here. If your energy has been too focused on giving to others and it's depleted you a little bit, but let's see. Um, so let's look at the fool first of all. Wrong deck. This deck. <laughs> Sometimes you forget which one's the clarifying deck. Right, so the fool first of all. I mean, it may be that you've been giving to people who, um, or are giving to people who need support because the emperor is the bus as well, aren't they? Um, five of pentacles is, if it's not about your personal health, I mean, it could be both actually, but these, these people are vulnerable. They're pretty much, I'm guessing that they're kind of homeless or they've been kicked out. They're out in the cold and the queen of cups is nurturing. So you, I'm going to assume that you're the queen of cups in this. You may have been giving to other people. Right, so the Eight of Cups clarifies the Fool, doesn't it? I mean, that's kind of needing to kind of go off and leave something behind or freedom from something. And as you can see, the Cups, I mean, you've got one Cup left there, but the Cups are tipped out, so that's that can be a sign of depletion as well. You've got the Emperor there again. Anything else? Anything else here? Five of Swords, okay, and one more. I mean, that can be conflicts with other people. And we have the Tower. Okay, let's get one more after that Tower because the Tower's are always a bit of a cliffhanger for me. Okay, so the tower with the hang of oh God, here we go with the um, <laughs> spiritual awakenings again. I don't think it's so. I mean, it could be the hanged man and the tower together because that's massive change. The tower's massive change, like a dramatic change and starting from scratch. And then the hanged man is about beliefs, isn't it? And it's about spiritual development. So it could be in relation to spiritual. There could be something here with spiritual awakening. Um, and you also have the Queen of Swords. I mean, she's about truth and beliefs as well. She's also an advisor too. So it looks like there could be something here telling you that you need to kind of loosen the reins or get a bit more freedom if you have been overgiving um, when it comes to other people. So let's look at that Two of Pentacles on its own. That's That doesn't feel right, but I'll have a look at it. Seven of Swords. Right, Two of, two of Cups, please. Page of Pentacles, so that is another, it's another kid, isn't it? It's, I mean, the Page of Pentacles, it's practical. So this is the, this is where the energy, um, the focus of the energy in supporting the Page of Pentacles would be more practical support, wouldn't it? So anything else for that? 
Right, Nine of Wands. Def defense is coming to mind like protection so it could be that you that you have a role where you protect um vulnerable people and that's the basis of the connection with them is protecting them in some foster pair of okay foster parent is coming to mind so i don't know if anyone anybody out there is a foster parent or someone has sort of assisted or taken responsibility for someone who's homeless doesn't have anywhere to stay is vulnerable being kicked out that sort of thing because this is stability isn't it the ten of pentacles there that is stability so it's almost like if this is a child or a vulnerable person who may be who may need protecting it's also providing them with some degree of stability um with that ten of pentacles and then you've got the devil here it almost feels like whoever this is this doesn't feel like you this page of pentacles and nine of wands it doesn't feel like you this this for me is like a vulnerable person or someone who appears to be vulnerable i'll put it that way because it i am getting a vibe that it could they, it could be a genuinely vulnerable person but then it can be people who have gotten themselves into sticky situations and you know like if somebody was a drug drug um had a drug problem or they're into gambling or something or whatever's happened and they've got basically they've kind of got themselves into it and they might be running away from something um which could be that devil i mean a, the devil is addiction let's see what comes after the devil actually why is the devil there Ooh, yep so yeah i wasn't i don't think i was wrong with that yeah i said i said it's like the, that is that energy is running away from something here you might have to be careful um there's a part yeah you could be okay so another thing that comes up with this kind of energy is somebody that um you may be assisting somebody who's experiencing domestic violence or hang on it's changed to domestic abuse now hasn't it? you know the terms that they have for it um but yeah, it feels like somebody's trying to escape something here. You may, I mean, it may be innocent and you're completely in the picture and you know exactly what's going on. But I don't know why I feel the need to say be careful um, that somebody could be a, a little bit. And I'm not trying to scare people, but there could be someone here who's who seems vulnerable. And it's not to say that they're not, but there's something a little bit deceptive and um, something a bit off about it is a vibe I'm getting as well. So just just be careful of that. Let's get one more for that devil, actually. This wasn't what I expected was going to happen here <laughs> with this reading, but yeah. Right, I've got the Wheel of Fortune. I'm going to have to get one more because that hasn't really made it clearer. I mean, it could just, I mean, God, the Wheel of Fortune can be connected to um, gambling, can't it? Especially with the, I believe it can, or money, especially if it's with the devil, um, Seven of Swords. So that gambling thing might not be far off. Um, Oh, so if it's not gambling, just somebody who's having money problems and trying to escape from money problems. But let's see what else comes out. This is a energy that I was not expecting. Four of Cups. This kind of feels like where you try somebody trying to um, potentially ignore or hide hide from a pro problem, possibly. So for anyone where. There is something a little bit dodgy if you're helping someone out or trying to support someone and they're trying to run away from something. Um, yeah. They might not be facing the problem. I'm going to leave that there because that took a turn that I did not expect, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah. So the main gist of it is the main gist here is you may be offering support to someone. You may be depleting yourself in the process, though, or giving too much, and it might be having potentially having an impact on you, whether it is financially, mentally, physically, whatever. Um, as I say, just be careful. Um, be careful of, of who you're giving to and how much you give. Um, even if it is completely innocent and the person genuinely is vulnerable, just be, be aware of depleting yourself in the process of supporting them because you've got life force energy and when you give too much to others, it can deplete your own life force energy, can't it, really? Yep, still still thinking this was not what I expected, but um, okay. So let's look at the Emperor card now as well. Okay. 
So I'm just going to put these cards back. I almost feel like I should pause because I took so many cards out and I've spent ages. I'm going to pause actually because there's loads to put back in the deck and I'll put them in separately. So it'll be one second for you. Right, Virgo. So let's move on to the Emperor card. This is your energy. This is how you're handing things. And I would say you're handing things like a bus. You're taking the lead, um, taking control of the situation. <laughs> I've got this thing and I think it was in one of your readings before I said that the way he's sitting there stroking that cat looks like the Godfather. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it literally does, doesn't it? So, right, the emperor. Why is the emperor here? This is how you're coping with the situation. And the thing is, with them, um, when you overgive, it's like, it's not overnight, is it? It's not, it's not that you give and then it has an instant impact on you negatively. I mean, it could, but... It's usually long term, isn't it? So you could be someone who puts themselves out for others for years and years and you seem like you're fine. And then it's like the, the body catches up eventually and it's like it's too much without, without you even um, realising. So we've got the Ace of Wands. We've got the Knight of Swords here. Anything else? God, no, that was like seven cards or something. Let's try that again. Queen of Pentacles, it's nurturing energy again. You've got the Eight of Pentacles. Nine of Swords, okay. What do I want to look at on its own? Let's look at the Knight of Swords. So we've got the Queen of Swords, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Eight of Wands. Right, I'm going to look at the Nine of Swords and then I will give my opinions. So Nine of Swords, we have the Three of Cups, that's other people again, isn't it? Hanged Man and the World. So you may be wanting to kind of use this emperor energy elsewhere um, and focus your attention on something else. But because we've got this nine of it, see, there's a spark here. So you've got a spark. You may be inspired um, for something. You've got the queen of pentacles. This may be where you focused on nurturing other people, but it may also be that you've got intentions elsewhere that you want to set to. Um other values, other things that you want to put your energy into, because you've got the Eight of Pentacles next to that, that's time of energy, but they, you've got a Nine of Swords here. Um, so it could be that your energy is, is focused too much elsewhere, like you've got other things to worry about or other people that you're worrying about, whereas really you kind of want to put your energy on a particular thing or situation or invest it elsewhere. But it's like it, it's the energy has gone to other people instead. Um and it could also be that it's like you may support others and you're kind of wondering, but where's my support in doing what I'm trying to do? So with this Knight of Swords, um, this is kind of like a card of facing the truth, isn't it? I mean, I know the Knight of Swords is connected to communication, usually communicating with others, but it can also be a card of facing the truth of what role am I playing here? Um what really matters to me what do I want to put my effort into and my energy like what do how do I want to move forward what do I want to move forward with apart from focusing on other people see this hanged man he's he's isolated isn't he um he's he's a, he's a character or it's a character that figures things out very much on their own but it's it seems stressful here with that nine of swords and again, as I say, it could be that you are wondering, where's my support? I, I give to everyone else, but where's my support? Or it's just that the, all of the energy is depleted here with supporting others. And then, but you're left to your own devices to figure things out on your own of how to, um, how to progress your own life. You might be very good at helping others to progress in their life, but it might be that when it comes to yourself, you, you're just kind of on your own. And obviously, every, whatever decisions we make in terms of what we pursue and how we move forward, it is our... It is essentially our choice um, and it is up to us to do it, but we are allowed to have, have support if we need it, aren't we? Let's just get something for that Queen of Pentacles and then I'll move on from that. 
I mean, that's what I said, isn't it? It's just about you may have other things that you want to focus your energy and attention on. You've got the Nine of Wands there. And the Empress. I mean, here, the Nine of Wands, it's kind of more an energy of resilience. Because um, the Chariot can be a card of determination. Um, it can be a card of determination. So next to the one Nine of Wands, it probably is more to do with resilience and determination. And then you've got the Empress, um, which is its abundance, creation, um, success even is coming to mind with this Empress as well. Like, where can you channel that nurturing energy are you giving are you, are you focusing so much of your nurturing energy on others and not having enough nurturing energy left to nurture what really matters to you um not to say that other people don't matter to you but there may be other things that matter to you like other projects other roles um other situations jobs even but you just might be finding your time is um is used up elsewhere so i'm going to leave that there and put these back as well so the central energy, it's an energy of sort of taking the lead and being the boss and taking control. But it is that energy going in the right place um, at this present moment in time. Would you like to use that, that emperor, emperor energy elsewhere in your life? I mean, you've got the two of pentacles. It's the balance, isn't it? The balance between being supportive to others and... Um, getting on with what you've got to do really and what else just came to mind then something else came to mind I mean your job may involve supporting others but then even if your job is to support others there still have to be healthy boundaries as well don't there so that it doesn't um end up having a negative or detrimental impact on you on your health and you know I think um I mean I've done jobs where the role part of the role is or the role is to give to others but then it can deplete you as well if you don't have healthy boundaries with it so let's look at the external energy, which is justice, the tower and the eight of pentacles. And I do almost wish now that I hadn't taken all three of those because that's a lot to, um, that's a lot to take. So I'm still getting pharmacy vibes from the eight of pentacles. Um, I would say it's an energy that's sort of saying it's, it's sort of, bringing to your awareness that something has to change here to make it fairer to you whether it is that you're just allowed or not allowed but um whether you kind of give yourself permission and find a way to focus your attention elsewhere um with the eight of pentacles or is that there is um an element of taking care of your own health as well there could be both both whether it is mental health physical health that could be involved too um but however you do this it needs to change drastically by the looks of it and become fairer to you so let's look at the eight of pentacles justice and the tower so we have we've got the empress i mean for me she is often about she can be about self-care especially this particular with this particular set of cards where i've said it's about making things fairer to you and looking after yourself um it gives self-care vibes and then you've got that four of cups which I know in a lot of the decks and I did say over here it was like somebody running away no it was um was it up here I think it was up here when when it clarified something else and I said it's like somebody running away from their problems because of the cards it was with like the devil and whatever else it was with but here it does feel more like self-care because it's like a do not disturb sign on the door this card four of cups is usually a, can usually be, a, be about rejection um complacency um apathy that sort of thing but i'd say with the empress and with this card because it looks like he's more in meditation and sort of deep contemplation it's about self-care and and giving yourself the time and space that you need to um to figure out where you want to focus your energy you've got the emperor there again or how you want to focus your energy um in a way that's fairer to you so anything else for that right I wasn't going to take those but I don't know if you saw how they fell I think I will take them ten of ones is dropping the burdens isn't it anything that um that is blocking you from following your path or walking on your path or it's just too heavy um it's a burden to bear um dropping that so that you can kind of focus on your what will make you happy um or focusing on something that will make you very happy um what I was going to say with the ten of ones is um 
I, not so long ago, I had to look up the, um, the definition of the word support, not because I didn't know what it meant at all, but because that was something that was very important to me quite recently. And it was part of my role was su literally support. I was a support worker and I always kept on describing myself for years, actually. Oh, I'm very supportive. But then when I looked in the dictionary, the first definition that I came across for it was bearing the load or bearing the weight or bearing the burden. And I thought, oh, that's not what I thought support was about. Um, I thought support was about encouraging, you know what I mean? Which it can be. But looking at that definition, it realised that it made me realise how much I'd taken support without even realising it. I'd taken on that version more of bearing the burden or bearing the load um, in situations where it was like, no, you're meant to encourage and not bear the burden of things not not hold things up for others when they when they're able to do it themselves and this is this is a lot ongoing thing in my life actually um not in every aspect of my life but just in certain situations where it's like you're you're taking responsibility for something for someone else as opposed to to um encouraging them to do it for themselves i mean i encourage people as well but it was just like no you, you're doing too much why are you doing this much? Let them do it. It's their, it's their responsibility. So just bear that in mind, bear the definition of support in mind. If you are assisting, supporting people, how far is it going? Are you doing too much? Do you need to take a bit of a step back um, in that and conserve your energy for yourself? So I'm going to leave that there. And I'm not talking about being completely self-absorbed and only focusing on yourself and what you want. It's just getting, again, getting that balance of, um, what is fair to you and, and what um, helps you to utilise your own life force energy instead of giving it all away, basically. So two of pentacles. The two of pentacles. Why is that there, please, as your advice? Well, I know why it's there, but anything else that we need to know about the two of pentacles. So you have, you've got the Queen of Swords. I mean, that for me is often about boundaries, isn't it? In this particular situation, you've got judgment there. That feels like it relates more to other people, to be honest, that judgment card, sort of giving them the opportunity to um, to deal with their issues. And I don't know why I feel the need to say to give themselves a second chance or to deal with their own second chances. So again... You know, like if you had someone that was around you where I said, be cautious if um, if someone's not if you're assisting someone and they're not giving you the full picture, it's sort of being wary of how much you how much you give to them, because then they're not going to grow and learn from a situation. Are they like if they're doing certain things that are bad for them and you prop them up, um, they'll never they'll never sort of figure out to how to stand up on their own two feet it's like they have to learn the lessons here because I mean the queen of swords she can be an advisor and a teacher as well can't she I'm not saying that you're literally meant to teach them a lesson or anything like that but you know what I mean and then you've got the judgment card here which can be about learning lessons kind it can be second chances but it can be learning lessons so that you can have a rebirth and and become a new person from an experience so anything else We've got the Page of Pentacles, which can be like a student, can't they? So again, that goes back to that whole allowing, taking a step back enough that people can learn their own lessons. Anything else? Right, where did that go? Oh, that has really disappeared on me, hasn't it? So just bear with me a moment. I'm going to have to pause the video for this. I can't even see it. Just bear with me a second. Okay, Virgo, so it was the hanged man, um, the hanged man. So again, that's that whole thing of allowing others to learn um, because the, the hanged man is about, it's about development, spiritual development, introspection, figuring things out for yourself, looking at the different perspectives for yourself. So again, I, I, it, this reading feels like it's all about other people, doesn't it, rather than you? I mean, apart from saying that you need to take a step back for your own benefit, it feels more about other people, doesn't it? So, yeah, again, I mean, that page of pentacles is in between the judgment card, which was rebirth, learning lessons, in between the hanged, um, the hanged man and the judgment card. The hanged man can be about beliefs changing as well. So, again, the page of pentacles is looking at that, taking a step back to allow people to learn themselves to learn their own lessons
And I mean, Virgo, I mean, I was going to say Virgo, Knight of Pentacles, it's a Virgo card, isn't it? And I was just going to say that you have a big sense of duty and the Knight of Pentacles is about commitment, diligence, a sense of duty, isn't it? Well, okay. Um, I think a lot of the Virgos I know, it's interesting because you guys, the, the ones that I know appear to have quite strong boundaries. And I say appear because obviously you don't know what goes on behind closed doors in people's lives. Like, for example, at work or something, because I think a lot of the Virgos I know, I don't know them necessarily on a deep level. Um, but the version I see of them, like in work or something, appears to have very strong boundaries. But then we don't know what goes on in people's families, at homes, with friendships. You could be bus energy at work and then at home there are people that can I've said this in I can't remember whose video, video I said this in that people can wrap you around their little finger or there's always one person even if you're a complete bus badass whatever there can still be one person that wraps you around their little finger that you just have a soft spot for and they just get away with it um but yeah so yeah as I was gonna say Virgo has a sense of duty um so again, it's just the balance, isn't it, between the sense of duty and taking that step back um, for your own benefit, the boundaries, that would be the boundary. Look, boundaries, duty, opposite ends right there. So that's the balance, the balance between boundaries and duty. So I'll leave that there and I'll get you a final card of advice. I don't know why I didn't, I just didn't expect this reading to go to this place. I'm not sure why. Um, I don't know. But let's get you a final card of advice and then we'll see what comes up for that. So any more advice for Virgo? Any more advice for Virgo, please? Or Virgo, Sun, Moon and Rising, I have to remind myself. Nope, too many. Let's try that again. That must have been about six cards at least. Any further advice for Virgo, Sun, Moon and Rising? Right, there we go. Yeah, oh, wow. Snake spirit, time to heal. So yeah, the, again, the health issues, if you do have health issues in any shape or form that, and well, you've depleted yourself, um, you may need to take a time out or set some boundaries with people or just be very careful in terms of looking after your health, get medical assistance or whatever, whatever it is that you need. So I'll read the message from this book. Um, and this is probably not going to go so much down the health route. It's probably going to go more down the emotional or spiritual healing route. But it's all relevant, isn't it? And it's all connected. So the Oracle message says, All of us need healing at times. And when snake spirit appears, it is time to repair, renew and replenish yourself in your vulnerable heart. Self-care and maintenance work are needed so that your vitality, I like that word, that's that like that life force energy, isn't it? Vitality, um, can arise. Give yourself the space to nourish your own well-being. I could have just read this oracle card and that would have been the whole reading. <laughs> Vulnerability is necessary for friendships and partnerships to work, which means all of us will have tender emotions at times. Be gentle with yourself and others now. Shed the past and step into a new way of being, for vitality is rising in you. This might be a good time to honour the work you have done to heal, grow and repair any damage within you, within those you care about and within your community. Celebrate together how far all of you have come in your healing journey and all that you have created. Unburden yourself of anything that no longer supports wellness, prosperity, positive relationships and well-being and open the door for healing to occur. Yeah, that kind of wrapped up everything, to be honest with you. That could have saved us like 30 minutes of reading. <laughs> um, the protection message says, no matter how much you may have lost or how you have been disappointed... You are called by snake spirit to shed the past and practice radical self-acceptance now. Only by forgiving yourself can you move on regardless of whether anyone else is ready for healing. When your tender new skin first becomes exposed, you may feel uncomfortable. Love yourself and remain vulnerable anyway. You have been weak, but now you are becoming strong and developing wisdom. 
and you will do better in the future. Snake spirit reminds you that hearts can be so easily wounded. Apologies and amends go a long way. Self-forgiveness for your role in what happened can help you heal. Remember, it is the one who has been wounded who often has the greatest power to help others heal. I love that. Remember, it is the one who has been wounded who often has the greatest power to help heal others. I strongly agree with that. And also um, Aquarian Insight, who I've mentioned multiple times on the channel, is a reader. Um and an acquaintance that um that I've followed for quite a while and that's something that when I've had personal readings with them um, with her in relation to um sort of do me pursuing the path of doing tarot and everything that's something that she she said that you know people people who've um been wounded sometimes feel like how can I tell anyone like give anybody any kind of advice or share stories or anything when I, I'm sort of healing myself and it's like well that's why you have the ability to do that because you've been through it so there's not really anything that anyone can say to you that would shock you or that you can't sympathize with on some level so yeah um I think we'll leave that there and why am I is Chiron to do with Virgo I'm just thinking if Chiron is to do with Virgo that um in astrology because I'm thinking about the whole wounded healer thing I'm not sure about that I could be just pulling that out of my ass to be honest but I'll leave it there um but yeah there's something about that that's come into mind actually I could be wrong anyway as I say I'll leave it there thank you for watching the video I do hope there was something helpful in here for you um feel free to like share or comment on the video or subscribe to the channel as well if you'd like a personal reading please see the description box below the video for that and until the next video Virgo sun moon or rising please take care